or can it buy a stock? In late August, Vaxion Biotech announced major changes in top management, hiring Christian Kanstrup as CEO. I'm joined in the studio today by Christian to learn more about his vision for the company. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, Michael. It's a great pleasure to be here and good to see you. It's good to see you too. Uh, I'd like to start off right away uh, with uh, just basics, basics about your background. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to Avaxion. Yeah. No, I'd be happy to. I mean, uh, as, as you said, I joined Avaxion on September 1st, so uh, now coming up uh, almost uh, four months into the Avaxion journey. And, and prior to that, I spent the last 25 years in, in, in the life science world. Uh, across the world and uh, across uh, across the value chain. Of, of those 25 years, I did spend uh, 20 years with uh, Novo Nordisk, of course a world leader in diabetes care now also within the obesity field. Uh, at Novo, I was living in Denmark, US, Japan, China, Switzerland, uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing a, a lot of different things, uh, focused on capital markets, focused on strategy, business development, and the past many years in, in, in Novo, I was uh, working in the commercial side of the business with, with the last couple of years being responsible for the uh, biopharma or the specialty pharma business of, of Novo. Mm -hmm. 20 years coming up, I also thought I should see the world outside and I joined a uh, smaller a private equity owned medical service provider called Medic and, and spent uh, just uh, about four years there mm -hmm. before uh, starting to talking to Evaction and, and was soon attracted by this combination of technology and biology. Mm -hmm. um, I've always thought that the intersection between this, these two, technology and biology, is super interesting. And, and being a Dane, of course, I, I, I knew Evaction uh, from, from the outside, but only when, when starting uh, talking to, to the people at Evaction, I realized the significant opportunities that, that uh, Evaction has uh, in front of, uh, of us here now and um, decided to, to take up the opportunity of, of joining Evaction and definitely haven't regretted that even though I would say it's a, it's a tough world out there also uh, when, when you are smaller biotech but also a world with lots of opportunities so uh, that that's what led me uh, to, to Evaction and, and having the opportunity of uh, deploying my vast experience in business development, capital markets, uh, strategy execution, and, and of course also the whole commercial side of, uh, of the business. Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks for that, that introduction. And well, speaking of, of this emerging field, mm -hmm. the tech bio field, you know, the, the, the uh, convergence of technology and, and biology, how does Evaxion fit in exactly? Could you tell us a little bit about um, Evaxion's technology. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's, it's quite interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, of course, uh, if you look at it right now, there's a lot of, uh, I would say, hype and focus mm -hmm. on, on, on AI and uh, also the combination of uh, AI with, uh, with the whole biology piece. What is interesting here is that Evaxion, when, when Evaxion was founded back in 2008, it was actually as an AI-focused company mm -hmm. with the objective of wanting to decode the human immune system using AI mm -hmm. and develop better therapeutics. Uh, I think it's fair to say at that point in time, people were almost laughing. Is that really possible to, to, to deploy AI into drug discovery and drug development? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think history have proven it is possible. And, 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 and that's where we... I would say have a clearly differentiated position compared to many of the newer companies out there because we have had the past 15 years to constantly develop and refine our, our uh, AI platform. Mm -hmm. And I think what's also important is it's not just about the technology, it's not just about the data, it's about the whole capability set you build around your AI platform. And, and that's where we have been uh, focusing very much on, on building this multidisciplinary set of capabilities with translational research team, with preclinical team, we have CMC, we have clinical development, we have our own state-of-the-art lab, and we have our animal facility, mm -hmm. meaning that when you work on a hypothesis from an AI point of view, we have the opportunity of taking that, taking those possible targets, going directly into our lab, into our animal facility, 
testing it out and feeding that back into to the AR model. Mm -hmm. So I would say right now, the core of Evaction, that's what we call AI immunology. Mm -hmm. that, that's our AI platform. Okay. Within that, we have a number of different AI prediction models, either for cancer, for bacterial diseases, for viral diseases. All these models that have been refined in constant learning loops mm -hmm. during the past many years. And, and I think that gives us a really unique situation that we have these validated platforms where we have proven both in preclinical models, but also very importantly in, in clinical setting, that there is a clear correlation between the targets and, and the quality of the targets our model is predicting mm -hmm. and the clinical outcomes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's much more advanced than what you see many of the other AI-focused companies out there, which mainly focus on, on data and retrospective validation of, of these data. Hmm. Well, you mentioned the quality of the of the target specifically. I know you're you're working with um, uh, immunotherapy for cancer, for example, uh, discovering new targets for cancer vaccines. Uh, I think you refer to them as precision cancer vaccines. Correct me if I'm yeah, wrong. Yeah. Uh, but one of the challenges in in cancer is attacking it and treating it um, um, in a way that cancer cannot override. The, the immune system, a patient's immune mm. system. So how does your AI model uh, or your AI technology get around this issue? Mm. We, we actually, we, if you look at it from a, a, a cancer point of view, we have uh, two approaches. One is the, the personalized cancer vaccines that um, uh, we have in, in clinical development where mm. we have EVX01 now in, in phase two development. And, and we actually just, uh, about a month ago, released the initial data from our phase two trial, which fortunately confirms the very strong phase one data mm -hmm. that we had. So super excited about uh, the continued development of, of EVX01. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, a, a emerging field of what we call personalized um, uh, cancer vaccines, where you are, uh, or oh, sorry, precision uh, cancer vaccines, so we, which are, building upon the, the same components of the, the AI platform, but uh, overcoming some of the challenges in the personal vaccines, which of course from a CMC and, and, and drug development point of view mm -hmm. are somewhat more cumbersome. Mm -hmm. and, and the precision um, uh, approach is exactly focusing on how can we take the best of our AI immunology predictive capabilities into deploying uh, possible new targets for either subsets of patients or a, a broad set of patients. And, and you can say, going back to your question around how to overcome the, the, the uh, cancer's um, ability to circumvent the immune system, mm -hmm. that, that is exactly by building up the different vaccines with these different components that our AI immunology platform is capable of uh, predicting, be that the new antigens, we also have um, a, what uh, is called ERVs, these endogenous retroviruses, mm -hmm. uh, which have proven to be very useful um, potential targets for, for treating uh, a certain number of, uh, of cancers. Mm -hmm. Well, you um, uh, go going back to the beginning of the story, with you coming in, uh, you're quite fresh at, at Avaxion, um, but you were brought in with a specific goal, you know, you, you, you're going to implement a specific strategy at the company. <clears throat> Could you talk a little bit about yeah. the strategy that you plan on implementing? No, I, I, I think um, where we are now, we are at the point in time where we need to start monetizing mm. on what we have been building during the past 15 years. We, we have gotten to a point where we have a clearly differentiated platform with the AI immunology platform. We have gotten to the point where it is about entering into to, uh, partnerships with, with pharma companies mm -hmm. as a way of, of realizing value. Mm -hmm. What we have done uh, and also what, what uh, started earlier on this year but has been uh, intensified since I joined mm -hmm. is we have been focusing on how can we refine and simplify our strategy, uh, focusing on value realization and execution. And, and, and what we have done is, I mean, the core is the AI immunology platform. Then, then we're focusing on, on realizing value via three different uh, 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 say prongs as we call it. One is targets, 
doing uh, collaborations around uh, either uh, early targets or target discovery. Mm -hmm. um, here we have, uh, during the past couple of months, been entering into two uh, collaborations around targets. One with a undisclosed but leading pharma company um, around a target discovery for a bacterial disease with a high unmet need and no vaccine available today. Mm -hmm. We entered into a collaboration with uh, African Biologics on developing an mRNA-based uh, vaccine candidate for gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what we're going to do, focusing on the target element, entering into partnerships, either on identified early targets or by, uh, say, target discovery collaborations aiming at uh, discovering novel targets. Mm -hmm. That's one piece. Then we have the pipeline, of course, where we are progressing. Our pipeline candidates, EVX01, as I, as I talked about, and then the final element, that's what we call responders. Mm. That is taking our, say, AI capabilities, our predictive capabilities, our data insights, deploying that into developing responder models. Mm. We just, uh, about a month ago, released uh, the first proof of principle for our responder model, focusing on developing or predicting who are the responders to checkpoint inhibitor uh, treatment. Um, and, and very proud about the results and we saw here that we are capable of outcompeting standard biomarkers in predicting which are the patients who will respond to checkpoint inhibitor treatment. Mm -hmm. And of course, with, with checkpoint inhibitor treatment being a highly expensive uh, therapy, mm -hmm. a therapy with uh, quite some side effects, uh, but also a therapy where even though effective, still a fairly large number of patients mm. don't respond. If you upfront can predict the patients that are not going to respond, you help society reducing costs, but most importantly, you help patients getting on to a effective ter therapy as mm. quickly as possible. So, so the whole idea here is we, we will be focusing on how can we develop a commercial offering mm. for these responder models either partnering with pharma, partnering with payers, uh, in, in finding a different way of bringing a offering to the market, which is not a, um, a necessary a compound, but more like a companion diagnostics, or, mm -hmm. or uh, you could see it in different ways. So AI immunology, the core of our business, then we have the target, we have the pipeline, mm -hmm. and the responder as a way of monetizing, mm -hmm. and that we do in a, what we call, multi-partner approach, where we are teaming up with, with pharma companies, different partners for each of these three different parts of our strategy. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, final question, uh, looking into the future, 2024, can we expect some of these partnerships uh, within the year? That we definitely should expect. I mean, uh, I have the ambition of being able to fund our 2024 cash burn with income from, from partnerships. Mm -hmm. So we should uh, expect to see some of these partnerships in, in, in the year to come. That has a very high priority that we uh, bring compounds forward in partnerships, either from a target discovery or from a already existing identified targets where we are teaming up with, with pharma players. So yes, <laughs> you should expect that. Well, good. Uh, looking forward to uh, to more news from Evaxion, absolutely. And uh, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. It's great meeting you. Thank you. Great pleasure to be here and good to see you.